Welcome to the Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. <laughs> Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Found Footage Full, a bonus episode here on the Dark Parade. And we are discussing a, uh, a relatively recent found footage film from 2018 called Followed, uh, directed by Antoine Lee, uh, who has only directed this in a short, it looks like, and is, uh, is written... By a guy named Todd Click, who uh, has only written this and uh, an, another film called Miles and the American Musical, um, which does not uh, sound like a horror film or a found footage film, but I could be wrong. Um, it, it is a story that is very familiar. It follows the, the trope of we have a guy who is uh, the host of a uh, YouTube channel, a vlog and is going to a haunted place uh, to stir up some uh, some viewers. And the idea is if he does this live stream for uh, his channel, and he, if he can get, I think it's 50,000 or 60,000 viewers, subscribers, then he'll lock in this big endorsement deal, which will allow him to, uh, to pay for um, his wife's... Uh, birth or the birth of their first child and so forth and you know ju just make himself a, a little bit of a contributor to the financial success of this relationship and so this is sort of the sub sub genre of uh it's not paranormal investigators going into a place it is a dude who does youtube stuff going into a haunted place uh in an, an effort to get subscribers uh, there's sort of a, a Gonjam haunted asylum vibe to it, except he is very clearly uh, a skeptic from Jump. Um, he, and it, there, like his channel is very BuzzFeedy. Uh, it, it has that kind of slick editing and that kind of thing. And so he and uh, his pals, a cameraman, uh, actually two, a cameraman and a, a camera woman, uh, a dude working audio and uh an editor is that right no there's four of them it's the two camera people the host and the editor sorry no audio guy i'm thinking of a different movie anyway uh so these four people book a room at a uh, a cursed hotel um and uh head inside for a couple of days to drum up all these uh these viewers and um, the guy's name is Mike. His channel is called Drop the Mic, uh, which is kind of fun. And the hotel itself is very much a stand-in for the uh, the Hotel Cecil in Los Angeles, which is real close to the homeless community, which is um, also the the site of a number of disappearances and like. Uh, what was her name? Kathy Lamb, I think was her name. The the poor girl who ended up in the uh, the water uh, water tower on top of the building, and and it turns out she had some mental issues and and so forth. So, uh, but you know we're borrowing heavily from that. The you know there's all sorts of haunted stories b built around the hotel Linux Hotel. I think is, is the name of it in this movie. Um, that is, uh, uh, you know, used to kind of hype up this story. There's the, you know, the Kathy Lamb bed. There's a serial killer that, uh, resided in the hotel for a while. There's all kinds of other ghost stories, uh, namely one involving a, uh, a dude who took his kids into the basement to kill them, uh, killed one of them, but one was left alive. Believe it or not, that is something that will come into play later in the story. Um, so let's evaluate this film as we do using hard science, which is a, a set of five criteria uh, to evaluate how good, how successful this movie is as a found footage film. And we uh, begin with question number one in, in our search for uh, whether or not this movie is a good one. 
what is the rationale for keeping the camera on and does all that work and in this case for sure uh it it is definitely a situation where the cameras are supposed to be on to have this continuous live stream going um there are very few times where you hear a character say well you just turn the camera off you know I, which is a thing that happens in a lot of these found footage movies where somebody just gets fed up. Just turn the camera off for a bit. And I'm, you're hiding behind that camera and stuff. And that doesn't really happen in this movie because the whole point is that they're recording everything. And it's supposed to be a continuous, uninterrupted stream of what's going on in this hotel. To the point that, you know, you have shots of them sleeping and... Uh, from security cameras and their dashboard cams and there's a drone and all kinds of things. So in terms of keeping the camera on, totally believable. There is no reason uh, in this movie that you would ever turn the cameras off and it works pretty well. Number two on our list of uh, criteria is uh, the characters. Are the characters worth following? And uh, Mike... Uh, as played by Matthew Solomon, is kind of interesting because he starts off being really obnoxious and, and kind of unlikable, but that's sort of his arc through the movie is is for him to be this kind of freewheeling, overly gregarious dude who then, when confronted with the supernatural, is a bit humbled. And you do see that arc through the film. So I think the most unlikable character is is ultimately kind of intentionally so and it's a bummer that he's the main character but then he's got his buddy uh chris who is a much more likable character he's kind of the one that's like man i don't know that we need to be fucking around with this linux hotel joint uh because you know people have people have died there a lot of people have died there and it was the home of a serial killer and there are all these reports of things that are potentially not just ghostly but demonic and maybe we shouldn't truck with that. But ultimately ends up going um, because he's in love with Danny, who is the other camera person. And I, I don't know that that's fleshed out real well. There are a couple of moments between Chris and Danny where you sort of understand, you know, what, what that relationship is or what he wants it to be. But it, it's a real back burner kind of relationship. And I don't think Danny comes across as being much of a forceful character in the film, uh, nor does Chris, really. Like, they're the best point of the movie, uh, for me, uh, in terms of the character of Chris, is the moment where he decides to leave the movie. And uh, I find that kind of uh, an interesting spin on, uh, you know, one character that's, like, throughout the whole film... Who is like, man, this is not a great idea. We need to get out of here. And then some shit goes down. And he's like, I, I told you, I'm leaving. I would like you to come with me. But if you don't, that's fine too. So, you know, the characters, I would say, are better than average for a movie like this. Uh, there, There is some depth. Although once you get into Matthew Solomon, the, the actor uh, who plays Mike... Once you get into his relationship to the hotel, it strains credulity, and I would say that that is perhaps a bridge too far. But that's more story than character, so uh, I think character we're gonna we're gonna say above average. Um, the authenticity of the film, how as a found footage film, how authentic does it feel? And this is that weird gray area where. This movie is certainly much more scripted than a lot of found footage movies and thus doesn't feel as organic, but it ends up, I think, being more entertaining because you're not watching a lot of bit, bad improv actors, you, you know, bounce off one another and ultimately just spin their tires for a scene. So, it and okay, so the authenticity of the performers themselves is a little suspect because you can tell much of the time that they're actually giving a performance, which in the grand scheme of things, I would rather that than be bored to tears by bad improv actors improving badly. So it's, mm, it's okay. You know, again, this is kind of a middle of the road, uh, sort of, sort of evaluation of the authenticity of the film, 
But then you get to the authenticity of the premise itself, which is very authentic and borrows heavily from, you know, the Cecil Hotel um, and has almost to the point where you dance around whether or not this is tasteful in some ways uh, because they do pretty much emulate that Kathy Lamb video um, for the purposes of uh, the film and they try to replicate the you know the numbers that she hits and so forth and turn it into uh, kind of a scare so is it authentic mostly and the question is is it so on authentic that it crosses a line where it's borrowing from real life tragedy and trying to turn that into entertainment without acknowledging the fact that there was a real world tragedy at the root of this and I kind of wrestled with that as I was watching it. You know, I'm not the most shrinking violet when it comes to those things. Um, because, you know, look, bad shit happens and, and people are entertained by it. That's That's been true of human nature forever. But some of the one-to-one comparisons between actual things that happened and events of this film are... Especially considering that this movie does, at a certain point, get kind of silly and supernatural... That seems... It's not like we're doing a careful investigation of the Kathy Lamb story. It's more like we're going to use that as a uh, as a scene within our film. And so, uh, you know, if that sort of thing bothers you, I think that Followed definitely suffers from the fact that it does borrow from real life in a way that may not be the most conscientious. But... Eh, you know, it still does add an air of authenticity because when you see it, you're like, oh yeah, that's a thing that I know happened. Even if you don't recall uh, precisely the details. So, authentic, uh, again, better than average. Um, Which brings us to watchability. Is this movie an easy watch? And yeah, it kind of is. It's uh, definitely a movie that because it is scripted, keeps moving the plot along that plot is a little messy and a little all over the place but I don't know that that's the worst because at the end of the day this is a movie that is built around the idea of like let's take a bunch of these kitchen sink style uh, scares and throw them all at you and see what sticks and some of it works some of it doesn't but it never really stops and when it does, it's only for a moment. Uh, occasionally, you'll get John Savage, venerable actor John Savage, to pop in as an expert to tell you uh, all about, you know, how the Linux Hotel is uh, full of ghosts and whatnot. But it it trucks along. It, it's got a good pace to it. Um, even in the early goings, as you're leading up to them going to the Linux Hotel, and uh, the main character is kind of at his most obnoxious, that's still entertaining to see this guy because it doesn't happen for very long before you get to the meat of the movie so yeah i would say again better than average um some of the stuff uh, again it has there are moments when i'm watching it where i'm like this you're just pulling this from another movie um but that doesn't make it less watchable that just makes it more familiar um, so that brings us to our final question in our uh, list of five criteria for this movie is it scary? And here's the the thing with Followed. Um, I think at times it is very tense. And at times it, it can be pretty scary. Uh, not all the time. Because uh, the plot, because they are taking that kind of airplane style throw the kitchen sink into this movie with, with ghosts and demons. And, you know, we've got pentagrams here and ghost fathers here and, you know this uh korean elevator game here which i think is maybe the first scene in the movie that's like oh this is really tense like you're actually building tension and making a creepy moment out of this even as i'm questioning whether or not it's tasteful it's still kind of frightening and there's uh, a moment at the end 
where, you know, the main character is kind of winding through this basement and it's just him and his camera. And it's not entirely successful, but there are moments that are, are genuinely uh, re- really eerie and kind of unsettling. And um, yeah, I, I think that it is sporadically kind of scary. And so on that level, it's a, a big success because so many of these movies are just so hamstrung by bad performances or a silly setup or, you know, bad effects or whatever it is that it breaks the illusion. And this movie kind of gets away with it to the point that it becomes a pretty scary little found footage movie. Um, I don't think it's, you know, like the high water mark of found footage horror is something like wreck, right? Where it is just so intense that by the end of it, you're breathless and you just want it to be over so that your heart can (laughs) return to a normal uh, beat. But this movie isn't quite there, but it has its moments. And on that level, I would say it's a kind of a success. And, you know, let's be honest, what we're coming to these movies for, if you're a found footage fool like myself, is to kind of chase that dragon a little bit and find that found footage movie that can still scare you some. And this has moments. Like I said, that elevator scene, I've seen this movie a couple of times now, and the elevator sequence I do find genuinely scary and eerie. And there are a couple of other moments um, in the movie, particularly towards the end, that I think are um, at least spooky, if not outright scary. So, yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's worthwhile in the scares department, which leads us to a final evaluation of this movie on a, a scale of one to five stars. Uh, half stars being allowed, no quarter stars because we're not monsters. Um, is this movie a five star movie? Of course not. Um, but it, it is better than average. And so I'm going to land right around three and a half stars which means i on my personal scale is like hey i'm i'm recommending this for sure if you're a found footage person and you haven't seen followed you should but there are reservations there you know some of the movie is not great some of the movie is borrowed some of the movie is blue um but there's enough there there to recommend it to fans of of this subgenre and I really enjoyed it. I've, like I said, I've seen it a couple of times now. Uh, both times I came away from it thinking, you know, that was all right. That was pretty good. I had a good time with Followed. And uh, I hope you do too if you haven't seen it. Um, of course, if you have seen Followed, please uh, hit me up. You can find me on Twitter at Dark Parade Pod. Uh, you can also, uh, over on Facebook or Meta, or whatever it is they call it now, um, the, the end of culture as we know it, I think, is uh, one title that they considered. Uh, but you can find the Facebook group for The Dark Parade, and that tends to be a wonderful little beacon of sanity and goodwill and, you know, people talking about movies and uh, me posting pictures of the inevitable uh, Santa Claus outfit I will be wearing um, in the not-too-distant future. And also, if you would, uh, hop over there and hop over to Legion Podcasts, uh, where you can find some links to some charity that we're doing where uh, we're buying gifts for kids. It is not, you don't have to donate money to nothing. Um, You can just go to this Amazon wish list that you will see linked in the Facebook group. And if you go to uh, my Twitter feed, you will find the link there as well. Um, and the program is for underprivileged children in Ashland City, Tennessee, which is uh, a nearby city for me that uh, has been economically disadvantaged for some time. And so, like I said, you're not spending money uh, or just throwing money at uh, some organization and maybe that money will uh, eventually get to someone who needs it. This is a very direct thing where you buy a present, it's sent to the woman who organizes uh, this whole affair, and then the presents end up under the trees of kids who would not have gotten uh, uh, many presents or any presents without our help. Um, so, yeah, it's been great. You know, we're closing in on about 100 gifts right now. So if you would like to contribute, and it's it's presents from 5 6 $7 all the way up to 50 or $60, whatever 
you can do to contribute uh it would be much appreciated and like i said there there will be presents under trees that wouldn't be there without you and i mean look i know we're a horror podcast but also i i like to believe in kindness and uh and in community and so if you have the opportunity uh to help with that it would mean a lot uh to these kids most uh particularly but uh it would mean a lot to me too because i i like the fact that we can kind of use this show as a uh, a cudgel for good uh in a world that often needs it so um anyway that's the psa portion of found footage full you will also uh hear some more about that particular charity up until the point where i don the santa claus costume and give out some presents uh and after that i'll shut up about it until next year so um anyway thanks very much for listening thanks for being part of the dark parade please join us on the the social media channels uh leave the feedback if you if, like i said if you've seen followed i'd love to hear about it. if you haven't seen followed go watch and then come back to me and let me know what you thought we'll be back in just a few short days with a brand new series uh on uh the dark parade where we're going to look at let the right one in and let me in over the next couple of weeks so uh please stay tuned for that uh good conversations i i think you will find surrounding those movies and uh enjoy your found footage time over the holidays uh and until next time uh as always i am Bo, and thank you for joining the dark parade <laughs>